Well, good afternoon, everybody. Clint Weider here, CPA McMill. CPAs and advisors, got Andrew Steffens Meyer here with me uh, this morning, also CPA at uh, McMill CPAs and Advisors. Hope everybody's doing well on this uh, wonderful November 14th, Tuesday afternoon. Well, hey, uh, we want to spend a few minutes with you walking through a new tax law that's come along here in 2023 related to Nebraska, but it's really a, a federal benefit, and we'll walk you through that. But uh, it just seems like we've been talking here internally just about the one thing that's been constant over these last five years, Andrew's been what? Change, right? We've been through so many different tax law changes, it feels like, in the last five years and COVID thrown in there with all that. So, yeah, it's just uh, this just adds one more wrinkle into the mix. But, uh, you know, we're here to help you navigate through that and find what's uh, the best benefit for you and your business here going forward. So just to go over uh, our quick agenda. Uh, we're going to be hitting on, you know, just what is this pass-through entity tax? How did it come about? You know, why why do we need to deal with it? Why should we deal with it? Talk about the benefits, a timeline of when everything needs to get completed. Walk you through an example, just to kind of give you a, a high level. Okay, what's this benefit going to be? Is it worth it for me? Kind of walk through that. Uh, next steps, and then. Also, there's one other thing that's kind of coming to fruition here is the Corporate Transparency Act. So we're going to hit that here on the at the very back end here. Yeah, change has been the uh, constant over the last five years. We used to be talking about PPP. Now, today, we'll be talking about PTET. So another acronym to, to memorize. Exactly. One more acronym in our arsenal that we got to remember. So, yeah, so what is a PTET? So it's a stands for pass-through entity tax. Uh, a lot of states have uh, put this in the law starting back in about 2020-ish or so. So Nebraska is actually one of the last ones um, to, to kind of pass a similar type law that other states have. Each state kind of has a little bit different twist on it, but uh, overall they have the same concept in mind. So it's just a way to voluntarily at the business entity level to pay your state income taxes rather than at your individual level. So I guess first things first, I'll just kind of click through here to bring these all up. First things first, this is just for pass-through entities. So what's a pass-through entity? So that would be any partnership. So you file a 1065 with the partnership, or it would be an S corporation, which was an 1120S. So if your business is a sole proprietorship, or if you are just a single member LLC, and so you just file a Schedule C, you're just a sole owner, don't file a separate business tax return, this would not apply to you. Now, however, there might be certain cases where there's some tax planning that it might make sense to bring on an additional owner or look at becoming an S Corp or partnership. And so we're gonna be looking at that with you for anybody that, <clears throat> excuse me, is a, currently a sole proprietorship. And there's other different planning that we can take a look at as well there too. But uh, today specifically, we're just gonna talk about current folks that are established as S Corps or partnerships. So this kind of came about uh, with the Tax Cuts and Jobs Act that uh, Trump initiated back in 2016, 2017, um, that basically did away with uh, a lot of deductions on the itemized side, including the SALT deduction, which is your state and local income tax deduction when you itemize. And so they put a limit on there of $10,000. So that really eliminated a lot of people um, being able to claim the state tax deduction benefit on their federal tax return. So in order to kind of get around it, the state saw this as a loophole, if you will, in the tax code that uh, they could actually change it because normally, you know, that pass-through entity passes all the income to the individual, goes on your individual return, and you pay your federal and your state taxes on your individual level. Well, the state's saying now that, hey, let's have that pass-through entity, the partnership for S-Corp, pay that state tax, which would then, on that pass-through entity, we give you the federal tax deduction there. And so then you get the benefit there instead of on your individual returns. So overall, this ends up being a pretty good tax law um, for business owners that have passed through entities. Yeah, and again, this is a Nebraska law that passed and really Nebraska is almost doing us a favor. So um, Nebraska tax returns are going to be unchanged. This is only to deduct the the state taxes on the federal return. So it's a federal right. deduction that they're allowing and this is how we have to um, make it happen, I guess, on the return. So 
just something right. to keep in mind. Nebraska returns will be unchanged. They're saying, you know, you didn't have a tax benefit by deducting these taxes. Now we're letting you have this benefit. Right. There will be some mechanical changes to your Nebraska return, but overall that the net liability for Nebraska purposes, as Andrew was walking through, won't change with this law. It's just strictly going to be a federal benefit for you. So moving on, so there's really going to be two components here to this PTET for Nebraska purposes. Uh, Nebraska, along with a few other states, are actually allowing you to retroactively um, pay in your state taxes related to 2018 through 2022. And then also there's election then to make for just paying in your 2023. So just to let you know, this is an annual election that will need to be done so we can make a determination year by year whether you're going to your past two entity is going to pay the tax at the entity level or not. So we'll have to make that determination on, a, on an annual basis. Most times if your entity, you know, is a tax, you know, generates taxable income and there's kind of a threshold that we think is probably a minimum threshold to where it makes sense to do. And we'll talk with uh, each individual client about their circumstances. But so if it's over that threshold, then yeah, it probably makes sense every year to make that election. Um, the unique thing is going to be going back and doing the, the, the retroactive 2018 through 2022. We'll kind of go through that here in more detail and kind of walk through an example here in a little bit. In order to get the deduction, uh, you will need to have the taxes paid. So if we want to get that deduction for 2023, the taxes will need to be paid in by the end of the calendar year. And that holds true whether you're a cash basis or a pro basis taxpayer. So we'll want to get, if, if we feel that this is going to be a good benefit for you with your tax planning and looking at your tax situation, we're going to want to get those tax payments made and remitted here before the end of the year for both the 2018 through 2022 and the 2023 in most cases. But again, it'll be individual or by individual basis there. The really nice thing that the state did for us here, instead of having to go back and amend all those prior year returns, uh, they're actually allowing for that retroactive five-year period of 18 through 2022. There's a one-page form that we can file and then just upload that form on the Nebraska Department of Revenue website. So it ends up being a pretty nice, slick way to do it. There's obviously work we need to do in the background to, to come up with the, with the deduction that's allowed. Um, but yeah, it, it should be a fairly uh, streamlined process that the state has instead of having to go back and, and administratively file five different amended returns would be a lot of work. So, And just to hit on this, I guess, in summary, you know, we do have the opportunity to deduct six years worth of state tax as long as we pay that state tax in by the end of December in this uh, 2023 year. So, um, right, any opportunity there. And also, the nice thing is, we don't have to pay all six years. We can kind of pick and choose which years we pay and string this out because we got till the end of 2025. We'll kind of walk through some some of that planning. But again, it's going to be like I said, all individual by individual basis. What makes sense based on your tax situation. But yeah, we're going to work through it with each and every one of you. And then um, payments are passed on to current shareholders. So. A lot of questions that we get on this is, okay, if I make that payment related to 2018 to 2022, I've already paid those state taxes, you know, during those individual years. Uh, why would I pay them again? So what the state's doing is it's basically you're going to funnel money to the state and it's going to funnel right back to you as a credit on your your uh, past year to TK1 that goes to your individual return. So the money is just going to kind of go in a circle. It's going to come right back to you once you file your return here in 2024. Uh, so it just kind of goes on deposit, shows then for federal that you made the tax payment for state purposes, get the deduction for federal purposes. But like I said, that money just funnels right back to you. So you don't end up paying your Nebraska state tax liability for those five years twice. So that all just mechanically works that way for you. So. All right, Andrew, you want to kind of hit on some of the timeline with the elections here? Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, just summarize what Clint said, you know, entities will pay this tax in, the shareholders of those entities will get it back. So the paying and getting it back is going to be the same amount. We're doing it to get that federal 
tax deduction. So, uh, but as far as timeline of elections, you know, just depends on uh, entity by entity, what makes sense for that entity and its shareholders. So, you know, a timeline for the prior years for 2018 through 22, we have to have that uploaded, that election uploaded and also paid in by the end of 25. So, you know, obviously we have a, this year plus two more years. So, you know, again, depends on your brackets. And then the current year election, if you're trying to pay in this 2023 PTET, uh, that election is due by the date that's earlier of the filing date or your extended due date of that return. So honestly, for most people, that's gonna be March 15 or when you file. So a lot of our pastors, you know, we're filing by April 15th with those uh, entity shareholders. And then for all of our clients, you know, these elections have to be, they're able to be e-signed and then we need to upload these through the Nebraska website. And that it's just a SharePoint website where we will be the ones taking care of those elections once we've walked through the calculations with all of our clients. So again, back to the benefits, uh, money goes in by the court, money comes back to the shareholders. Uh, the benefit is what is your marginal tax rate and take that times whatever amount that we are coming up with to pay in. So, you know, if we come up with 100,000 needs to be paid in, you know, and you're in the 24% bracket, you know, that's an actual tax savings of 24,000 on your federal return. And your marginal tax rate, that just means, you know, what is the tax rate on the next dollar of your income? So just to look at your taxable income last year and, and we'll be relaying what your uh, federal tax rate is if you're not sure. Right. But again, huge benefits if we're talking about six years of state tax. If you have the cash flow to do it, you know, obviously a great benefit for our clients. So we'll walk through an example just to put some real dollars and cents to this thing. So, you know, John Doe is 100% shareholder in an S Corp. And so this S Corp had income for the last five years. So 2018 through 22 of 100,000 each year. So again, net income of 100,000 each year. Uh, this next calculation just shows every year that net income of 100,000 take that times the state tax rate, which is again, how we come up with what your state tax expense is. So, you know, you get 6,840, that's your tax, take that times five years. And, you know, we'd be paying in a payment of 34,200 as part of this PTET. And again, like Clint said, we're gonna try to pay this at, by the end of December, but really, we want everybody to get these payments in. So it's gonna be December 15th, honestly, is when we would recommend these payments get paid in by. So the ABC Corp is actually going to be sending in a PTT payment of 34,000 by middle of December. And then, you know, John Doe ends up filing his 2023 tax return. And again, his federal tax is reduced by that 7,524, you know, so that's that 34,000 number times his federal tax rate. Yep, no, you hit it right on. And again, like Andrew said earlier, there's no state tax benefit to this. So it's just gonna all wash out on, on your Nebraska tax return. Um, to no, no benefit there. It's just gonna be strictly this um, federal benefit that we're talking about that it's gonna be. And I guess I never mentioned this at the beginning, of the webinar if you guys have any questions whatsoever we're going to be watching our question box here so uh if you have questions throughout we'll try to hit them throughout this webinar otherwise we'll hit them on the back end as well so let's walk through another example here andrew yeah so our prior example is uh 2018 through 22 obviously years that have already happened so this is just you know advancing that example one year to the 2023 uh you know tax return and what do you know, ABC Inc. has another 100,000 of net income in 2023. So 
again, we're just, uh, we'll be making a payment in. So the only difference in the last example and this one is this, this example is only one year and the Nebraska rate is a little bit different. So there's a slide uh, we have at the end of the presentation that goes through the Nebraska rates. But in this example, you know, they're going to pay in 6640 before December 15th again. And, you know, again, that 6640 is going to be a federal expense on ABC Inc.'s tax return. And again, you see that that tax savings in this example is only about $1,500 because we're only talking about one year. We're in the prior example, we we're talking about five years worth of tax. So again, you look at both examples in total and we can pay in six years of Nebraska state taxes and have them be deductible. Right. So Andrew, I'll, just, I'll ask you a question. So like, uh, let's take for example, this 23. What if we don't know what our estimated income is? We don't feel comfortable making a payment. So we wait on that uh, ABC ends up waiting until making an election with their their return when it's filed, say April 15th, and then they pay in the tax then. Do they get to deduct that on 23's taxes or would that be in 24's? Yeah, like you hit on earlier, everything is cash basis. So it's all when you pay it. So if you don't pay it by December uh, 15th, 31st, whatever in 23, it's gonna be an expense for 24 and then you're paying that in in April and you would be getting it back the next time you file an individual return, which is April of 25. So we, we have to be aware of, okay, if we pay this in, we're not going to get it back until we file a 1040N with Nebraska. So there are some timing issues, but I guess all that to say, we have a lot of flexibility because if we went back to that slide, you know, that prior year elections for 2018 through 22, doesn't need to be filed or paid in until 2025. So there's a lot of flexibility. You can do a couple years now, you can do a couple years next year. Again, just depends on your tax brackets. Right, that's a great point, Andrew. There's no reason to panic and think that we have to have everything done here by the end of the year. You know, in most cases, you know, we wanna strive to get that tax benefit to you sooner rather than later. So if we can do it, get an accomplished brief by the end of this year and it makes sense for you both from your tax situation and from a cash flow perspective you know let's let's get it done but like to Angie's point the state's allowing us to pay in those retroactive five years you know all the way until the end of 2025 so we can do them all at once bunch them together all five years we can take a couple years at a time you know there's different things that we can do or we can wait all the way until 2025 and do all those five years then so we got some Got some really good flexibility, which is great. And I think the state was aware that this is a big change. And so it's gonna take you know us taxpayers time to get our arms wrapped around it and then you know communicate it to, to you guys to make sure that um, we're, we're doing what's best for you. So the state's given us some flexibility there, which is great. I mean, just overall, when I think about it, it's just really a change in your mindset. Just from the, you know, you're used to paying all your, your either tax payments or your quarterly estimates at your individual level for your past rent, you know, that includes your past rent to income. Now it's just changing that mindset that, hey, I'm going to be paying my state taxes at the entity level instead of me personally. Otherwise, federal stays the same, everything else stays the same. It's just making that one change, if you will. Yeah, and when we talk about timing um, or why should we do this or when should we do it, Timing wise, you want to pay this thing in when you have the highest tax rate. So whether that's 23, 24 or 25, again, we don't know what your tax rate is going to be. Best case scenario is you pay, you know, all the years, maybe not 2023 20, in that highest tax bracket year you have on your federal side. And also what dictates when you should do it is also cash flow. So if you had say 2023 is your highest rate year and you have the cash to pay it in, we should pay as much in this year as we can. Absolutely. Prior to December 15th, you know, which gives us 30 days to pay that in. All right, now we're gonna kind of walk through some next steps here. So kind of what we've done so far already is gone through everybody's files and we've gone back and kind of computed you know, what, what that PTT looks like for 2018 through 22, how much that's gonna be. 
And so we got a pretty good idea of where everybody sits um, as far as that, you know, PTT for that retroactive. Of course, right now we're working through tax planning for 2023, so we don't know where things maybe sit with you yet for 2023. But as we go through those tax plan appointments, we'll be able to give you an idea right away is, hey, if we want to pay in those prior five years here to next month, this is the amount it's going to be. Here's your tax benefit. You know, does it make sense? Or, you know, hey, you know, if you only do half of it, that'd be great because it gets you down to the top of your 12% bracket. And so you're, you know, maximizing, you know, the 22% tax benefit, if you will, which is that next bracket higher. And then we'll save the rest for the next couple of years. So, again, every situation is going to be unique and individual. So we'll, we'll go through those one by one on a case by case basis. Yeah, like you said here, we'll be in contact with everybody as well. Um, we realize that some clients that will benefit from this, obviously we're doing tax planning. There's some clients that we are not, you know, set up to do a tax plan every year, but those entities still need to think about this. Right, absolutely. So what's this next 30 days look like? So it's going to be kind of a mad rush, you know, getting some of, getting all this done, but we got a plan in place to hopefully make it as streamlined and as easy for you as possible. So one unique thing that we haven't really touched on yet, um, most of our, most of you will probably need to file a 2018 Nebraska tax return. You're probably asking the question, why? Why would I need to do that? Why only 2018? So for years 2018 and prior, if 100% of your income was sourced to Nebraska and not any other state, you were not required to file Nebraska returns. So nobody, you know, those past three entities would not have filed Nebraska returns for 2018 or prior. However, if we're gonna do that five year retroactive um, payment, we have to have that 2018 tax return on file for that past three entity mm -hmm. for you. So the nice thing is though, the state's allowing us to get an e-signature on that. So we can send you an email um that allows you to go ahead and sign your 2018 nebraska returns so we can get that on file for you and then also the same thing with the election for that five-year retro active uh, ptt for 2018 to 2022 we can get that e-signed as well and then the 2023 election has to be filed separately we can't file it with your tax return unfortunately and we'll have to upload that then into that the share file that andrew talked about earlier so luckily all three of those things you know, we can get e-signed, which would be great. And so you'll be seeing emails from us as we go through each of your situations and, and we'll talk you through them to make sure what the plan is uh, fits your individual tax uh, planning needs. You know, we'll get you those packets emailed out to you from a staff <clears throat> member at our office so you can sign, get those back to us. And then we got a tracking system to make sure we track everything that, hey, that 18 returns filed, check. You know, the 2018 through 2022 elections done, check. 23 election done. So we're going to be tracking that all. The one thing that we're going to need you guys to help us with is we can't make the payments for you ourselves. So, and anything over 5,000, correct me if I'm wrong, Andrew, but anything over 5,000 that's due, the state is required to do electronically with the ACH payments. You can't send in a check. And so within that email, when we send you the email for the, those items to sign, we'll give you detailed instructions of exactly uh, how to go on to the state's website so you can make those payments. Yeah, just a few things, I guess. The 2018 Nebraska return, uh, you mentioned it, but that's the entity's 2018 Nebraska return. Obviously, right. everybody listening to this, you know, filed a 2018 personal return. So this is just for that entity. Um, and then these are all the possible things that we would send out. So this is like the most that you would get from us. Some clients might only have the 2018 through 2022 election. Some might not have the Nebraska return that you even need if you weren't in existence back then. Or, right. or if you had a loss in 18, obviously we're not counting that in there. So this is all the possible stuff that you would get to sign. Right. And we'll detail it out to you in that email because the only thing else we'll need back from you would be we want to get a confirmation of that tax payment so we can include that in your, in your file here so we have proof of it in case the state ever asks for proof of payment on that. So that would be the only other thing to discuss there. All right, so that kind of wraps up the PTT. Do you have anything else, Andrew? Yeah, we did have a question uh, come through. So um, 
it, it really relates to how much an entity can pay in and deduct oh. through this yep. program. And so really the PTET is a formula, whatever your net income is times your Nebraska rate is the max amount you can pay in. So do you want to go back to that last example, like three slides ago or something? You know, we can't just pay in like a million dollars of this just to lower our federal income, which would be great, but we can't do that. It's all based like this, um, let's see, this first bullet point on here. So the maximum amount that ABC Corp can pay in is net income, which is 100,000 times that 6.64. That's the maximum amount you can do. So it's it's always capped. We can't we can't just pay in whatever we want to deduct it on federal and then get like a bigger refund on state. And so right. the forms are going to be set up to where when we file these 23 business returns, if you have extra that you paid in because we will have to estimate a little bit, you know. If you have extra on file, that will just go towards next year's PTET. Right. In your yeah. liability. So one thing we haven't talked about in this webinar because it's a little bit in the gray still is once we pay this in, Nebraska is going to expect it on a year by year basis that you're paying it in through estimates. So again, that's just another layer of complexity, but um, I wouldn't say at this point we have enough to to probably recommend to clients one way or the other quite yet. Right. No, I agree. Yeah, there's there's still information coming out, forthcoming yet from the state on how everything is going to work mechanically, you know, in 2024 with, like Andrew said, quarterly estimates will be, will be required at the NTC level now for Nebraska and different things like that. So as soon as we find out more on that, we'll be in communication with you. But just to kind of tie the bow on this, you know, let's say Andrew, you know, they do have the hundred thousand of, of, of income, but instead of paying in the six thousand six forty, let's just say somebody made a, you know, estimated five thousand and paid that in by twelve thirty one, but then they ended up owing six thousand six forty. How how does that impact them? Yeah, so they paid in five thousand, but their PTET liability was six thousand six forty. So. Yep. If they paid in five thousand before twelve thirty one, they get a five thousand dollar credit. Uh, obviously, they haven't paid in that delta or the change of one thousand six forty until twenty four. So then they deduct that difference in whenever it's paid. It's cash basis. So twenty twenty four, they would you know deduct that difference. Yeah, but then to the the. The, the person asked the question, you know, if they paid in ten thousand dollars here by twelve thirty one, you can't deduct that because it's the lesser of the cash is paid or the cash paid or the actual tax liability due for Nebraska. That's six thousand right. six forty. Yeah, in this example, if you paid in ten, well, you can only deduct six thousand six forty. So then the three thousand whatever um, is carried forward to the next year. Perfect. All right, we'll speed back through here. So the one other thing now that we kind of want to walk through, and Andrew kind of alluded to this earlier, um, Nebraska, along with this PTT change, uh, came out with a, a new tax rate schedule through 2020, actually through 2027, um, which will lower the tax rates down all the way down to 3.99%. So we can see in the years prior, from 2022 prior, 6.84 was the top uh, tax rate for Nebraska. And then each and every year through 2027, that's going to uh, stair step down, which is great. It is great. Um, I guess the importance of this program, as rates go down for Nebraska, the importance of PTET goes down too. So that threshold, you know, we might say if you owe a payment of, I don't know, whatever, 5,000 or less, it might not be worth it to even go through this program with all the work that's, you know, we have to look at that threshold, but, you know, fast forward to 2027, the Nebraska rate's only 3.99. And so that threshold for being worth it to pay in PTT is fewer and fewer clients, really. So at that point, you'd have to have pretty sizable net income on that entity to, to make it worth the squeeze. Right, right. 
And that goes to, to, to folks that are looking at making a change from a sole proprietorship or a single member LLC to be taxed as a partnership or an S corp that, you know, we really need to, before we jump right into that, we need to make sure it makes sense uh, based on, you know, the net income that's coming out of this entity or out of the, out of your business to make sure it makes sense just administratively that uh, to make that move. So we'll walk through all the pros and cons with that with you on an individual by individual basis. Right. Yeah. We don't want to just say if you're a sole proprietor, let's get two members in and, and do this PTT thing. Um, it just, you know, we have to look at the future to, to see if that's worth it. Right. Absolutely. All right. So one other thing we kind of want to hit on here is a corporate transparency act. There's been a little bit coming out on this here as of late. So we just kind of wanted to, uh, briefly hit on it here because it will impact you know people with past through entities so at, at just a very high level this really boils down to worldwide they're trying to crack down on um, money laundering so this is an anti-money laundering uh, law that's kind of coming into effect so they want to be able to on all small businesses they want to know who the ultimate owners are basically so if they ever needed to from a law enforcement standpoint they can easily track down to see if there's money flowing from xyz entity to another one and being laundered right so as long as you're not doing anything illegal nothing to worry about right however it is kind of a pain to have to do this so right now as everything sits by the end of if you have an existing entity by the end of 2024 you need to submit fill out and submit a form um, online to basically detail out all your ownership for your for your entity. Now that the kicker is, you know, that's coming up here pretty soon, the form and the website aren't even available yet. So we're still waiting on more information to come from FinCEN on that. There is a high likelihood that this thing is gonna get kicked uh, for another year down the road. So probably won't be a thing we have to worry about until 2025, hopefully. Uh, since information on this is coming out so so slowly but we just wanted to make you aware that hey we're on top of this we know what's going on and we'll be sure to communicate any changes with you on it but it is something we're going to probably need to deal with if it's not in 2024 or be 2025 and then the other thing you know if you have a new entity that you create you have i think it's up to 90 days to get this submitted but i think you know your attorney at that point in time will be up to speed with everything so when you set up a new llc for example they'll submit the form right away to FinCEN for you. So there's nothing to do there. The only thing that might trip you up down the road that we're always gonna to need to be in communication on is if there is an ownership change with your existing entity, you have up to 90 days to report that ownership change to FinCEN. So it's gonna be one of those things we're gonna to have to remember on that, which they, those things don't happen very often. So it could be one of those things that's easy to remember and, and, and to miss, but uh, Again, as more detail comes out on this, we will be for sure to share it with you. And I think the last um, thing we wanted to hit on, you know, high level, obviously anybody who has the cash to do this, PTT should do that. And also the payment going in is gonna be paid by entities, you know, in an ideal world, December 15th in one month from today, it gets paid in. The money comes back to the shareholders and should be refunded April 15th when we file or whenever you file if you're an extended person. Uh, but also nothing guarantees that the state is going to be ready for this. Uh, obviously it's a state program they came out with, but um, as we've seen in the past, they can lag a little bit in refund times on a normal year. And this is a huge undertaking that they're um, that they've created, uh, I guess. So who's to say they're ready to get those refunds out right on April 15th when we file? So the important thing is, you know, we talk about you need the cash to do this. Well, you need to be okay with paying the payment in in December. And best case scenario, we get it back in March or April. That's the best case scenario. It could be you know, May, June, we're not sure what, what the state turnaround is, but all we know is the state's gonna have millions of dollars from this program coming in and how quick can they get it out? So it's coming in through an entity, but going out through shareholders. We hope they can get it out quicker than, um, yeah, hope, hopefully it's quick. 
That's a great point, Andrew. Yeah, like you think about, you know, one other thing we didn't talk about was the Nebraska property tax credit. You know, that's been out there for what, three, four years now. So the state's been dealing with that. And that, that at times hasn't been the smoothest process. Um, so yeah, I mean, the state's got a lot on their plate with these different credits and incentives. So um, yeah, you're just gonna have to be okay with potentially having some cash sitting down there at Lincoln for a while before it gets back to you. And and just, you know, it's, Andrew makes a really good point because you gotta think about a couple things. One, if you've been making estimated taxes individually already here throughout 2023, you're gonna almost effectively have, if you, if you decide to make the election for 2023, with PTT and make that payment here in December, you're gonna effectively almost have like, you'd be doubled up for 2023. Um, so you have a nice refund due to you there. And then on top of that, if you make the retroactive uh, payment from 2018 through 2022, you'll have all that cash, like I talked about earlier, just goes in and comes right back to you as a credit. But again, it sits there at the state and you don't get it back until you file a return. And the state processes your tax return. So, you know, hopefully it's a smooth process and those refunds come back to you quickly. But uh, just wanted to kind of throw that out there in case there is a little bit of time delay. You're going to have to be okay with that sitting out there for a little while. The holdup won't be on our end. <laughs> it's never all. It's never our fault, Randy. Right? Exactly. right. Exactly. <laughs> oh shoot. Well, I'm looking to the questions here. I don't see any more. Yeah, and again, partnerships and S corps, C corps don't count. Um, you know, nonprofits do not count. The states don't count. S corps partnership. So if you looked on your tax return, if it says 10.6, or 1120s, those are the entities that uh, can pay this tax in. Perfect. Perfect. Well, with that, we'll go ahead and close things down. I really appreciate everybody who was able to jump on and join us here. Uh, we'll be in touch with you each individually as we work through your tax plans and your individual tax situations. So, you know, we're, we're on top of things right here with everything going on with this new tax law change, and we'll be in communication with each and every one of you here shortly. And I know we'll send this out. This will be available on the website and also I'm sure we'll be sending this link out to uh, clients who weren't able to make this webinar. So be in touch. Perfect. Take care, everybody.